Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where, where we've got another puzzle from Professor Dorlier. Uh, Dorlier is a maths professor and is just producing, you know, puzzles at a prolific and brilliant rate. Everything that gets submitted or recommended by Dorlier just turns to gold. Um, and the testers have had a look at this one and say that this, this is an absolutely beautiful puzzle. It's called Whisper Zipper. Um, and I think these blue lines here, they're not region sum lines, which was my initial assumption when I saw the grid. They're something called a zipper line. Um, now I have come across a zipper line before. I want to say in a GDC puzzle, but I'm not even sure if that video has been on the channel yet, because I think I record it as one of, I, I do have a stash of holiday videos so that if I ever have to take a day off for whatever reason, um, you know, I have, there's not going to, I'm not going to miss a video that day. Um, and I seem to remember that I think, I think I have done a zipper puzzle like that before, a zipper line puzzle, but it may not have, it may not have appeared, but I do recall thinking what a clever idea it was. Um, and anyway, the, the other rinky dink with this six by six grid is that we don't know what digits <laughs> are meant to go in the Sudoku. We've got to select six digits from the digits one to nine and make that work. So that's going to be the trouble for us today. Uh, and I'll read the, read you the rules properly in a moment or two's time. Let me, let me, let me give you a bit of info about a variety of things first. We have, we have settled on a day when Mark and I are going to be streaming again, coming into the winter months, we thought. We thought we would cheer ourselves up and perhaps some of you by um, spending some live time with you. And we're going to be taking a look at this game here, The Chance of Sinar. Um, and look, look at the reviews of this overwhelmingly positive, um, which is very hard to achieve. And this has been recommended to us a few times. So next Tuesday um, at 10 p.m. UK time. That is when we're going to be streaming. So if you, we'd love to have your company. If you want to spend a couple of hours with us, um, be great to see you there. Um, next, um, there, there was something else. Oh yes, I mentioned yesterday the Kickstarter. There, there is going to be a new Kickstarter related to Fog of War. <laughs> I probably, I don't think the the Kickstarter preparation page is going to be released today. I think it's going to be released tomorrow. So I better not say too much more about it, but that is also coming out actually next Tuesday, the 14th. Um, so that's, that's pretty exciting. We, we are very excited about that. And I'll tell you more about that in the coming days. Um, over on Patreon, we've got My Solve of Crux by Jay Dyer. And of course, Dimono's November competition, Sudoku Hunt, uh, which is a short story. Uh, where to access the later bits of the story you have to solve sudoku it's beautiful beautiful and lots of you have been enjoying it so do check that out um if you're a patron of the channel and if you're not do consider becoming a patron a couple of bucks a month the best sudoku um value entertainment we believe on planet earth um and yeah that's that now birthdays let's do some birthdays um John T. I, I'm late with this, but it's not my fault. Your dad, Nick, wrote to us. Um, I think your dad's in Chester and you have just returned to Cardiff University um, following a weekend of celebrating your birthday at home. And I was very amused to read that, that over a few beers you were talking to your dad. You got onto the subject of Wren and that got you onto the subject of cracking the cryptic and you discovered that you were both watched the channel which is fantastic to hear so john t many happy returns i hope you had a great birthday um next aiden you've turned 28 today and i know this because your brother ashton wrote to us and i believe i believe the two of you are in disney world on a family vacation today so many well i, I i'm pretty sure disney world will have some good chocolate cake um so Aiden, happy birthday. Um, Andrew, it's your birthday. So I'm not sure how old you are, but your partner Damon wrote to us and said that you were a big fan of the channel. So thank you for watching, Andrew, and many happy returns. Josh, it's your birthday. And I know this because your friend Maris wrote to us. Um, and then Mark, you've turned the big three zero today. And I know this because your boyfriend Wout wrote to us. I know, I know the name Wout from cycling, Wout, Wout Van Art. Um, and uh, Wout described you as being, um, well, liking reading, puzzles, water polo and singing, which is a very eclectic mixture uh, and makes me think that you would be a good person to meet at a party, unlike 
certain other people who shall remain nameless. <laughs> but anyway, Mark, many happy returns. Um, now, that's all the news. I'm sure there was something else I was meant to tell you, but I can't remember what it was. Let's have a look at Whisper Zipper and see what Dorlea has in store for us today. We have got exactly six digits um, from one to nine were selected. Which digits were selected must be determined by the solver and are placed in every row, column and box. So <laughs> I, was, I was even, I've only just read it and I was about to say, so that means we have to put the digits one to six in each box. That's totally not true. We've got to put some selection of six digits from the digits one to nine in each row, column and box. Digits an equal, now right, this is the zipper line. Digits an equal distance from the center of a blue line must sum to the digit in the center of that blue line. So I don't know how long that one is, but I can, I can see how that's gonna work for this line. So that means that that digit is the sum of these two digits. Let's actually work it out for this line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So the central digit is the eighth digit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right, so that cell, what we're learning, let's just label this somehow. We'll, um, maybe we'll give it a circle. No, your red circle. Right, so that's the center of this big zipper line. And what we're basically being told is that those two digits sum to that one. Those two digits sum to that one. <laughs> These two digits, sum to that one. I might be getting this wrong, but it's something like that. You go an equal distance away from the center and the two digits that you find there have to add up to the center. Um, okay, and adjacent digits along the green line must differ by at least five. So this is a so-called German whispers line. So if this square here was a one, this square here would have to be at least equal to six because it must be at least five different from the one here. And that is all the rules. Um, do have a go. Dorley's puzzles are, they are just exquisite. Um, so I cannot recommend them highly enough. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play, let's get cracking. Um, Right, so I think what we're going to have to do is probably to colour in the digits that that sum to the this digit here. Uh, and we can see what the options for this digit are. So let's try and do that. So those two squares are the same. Not the same, sorry. They add up to the same. They add up to this digit. I'm going to get my nomenclature all wrong. Are those two are in the same row. These two, <laughs> running out of colors. These two, I corrected my, um, my oh, I corrected my, my green. It's not as quite as fluorescent as I, it used to be, but I, I still think it's better than whatever. I think I had a very light gray before. Um, right, so what's that told us? That's t so that's telling us that I suspect this somehow we're going to prove is a nine. Um, and the reason I say that is that all of the, the, the nature of the zipper line is that you're summing two digits. And here there's an awful lot of sums of two digits and nine has the most different ways of summing two digits. If, because nine can be made up in four different ways. It can be one, eight, two, seven, three, six, and four, five. Whereas if you take eight, it can only be made up in three different, well, three different ways, unless you can double four. That's actually a horrible thought. Uh, but here, Double four, well, hmm, actually double four, you could do double four here, couldn't you? You couldn't do double four in the orange squares, but you could, or the yellow squares, but you could do double four maybe in the purple squares or in the gray squares or the blue squares. Um, hmm, okay, so maybe nine doesn't quite have, doesn't quite rule the roost in terms of the number of different ways that it could work. Um, but oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, hang on, I'm talking absolute claptrap, aren't I? Because there is, there are only six different digits in the puzzle. Oh, so I think we can forget all about that then. 
because actually yeah even 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 something like seven which has only seven only does does have three different ways of making making itself add up one six two five and three four you couldn't have seven having those three different ways because that would involve this puzzle having seven different digits oh i've not understood this at all sorry um so maybe actually this is more likely to be something like but if it's six then oh i see you could have double three. Oh yes actually maybe six six feels like it might be my best option now because if this is six i could have one five two four and double three and that would be six different digits now how do we do this then? Sorry. Oh. No. Oh, no. Hang on. It can't be six. Oh, no. It could be six. I was thinking it couldn't be six because of the whisper. Because there's, well, there's some features of German whispers lines that probably are worth just mentioning. First is you can't put a five on a whisper because if you try and put five on it, the next digit becomes impossible. It's got to be at least five different from five and there's no valid sudoku digit that meets that criteria or well, which means that each digit along along a whispers line is either higher than five or lower than five and they oscillate so if this was lower than five then this even if this was one and we only increased it by the minimum amount which would be five you still get to six which is the other side of five and then if this was nine and we only in decreased it by the minimum amount of five, this would still be four, and therefore the other side of five. So this oscillates, but that means a four cell line must have two high digits on it. So if I think this is going to be a six, then I have to put two sixes on this line, and I can't do that actually. If that's six, this couldn't be six. So this would have to be high, and those would both be six. Ah, so maybe this isn't six. <laughs> um, what's wrong with that logic proving that this isn't six? Well, Hmm. Well, maybe what maybe what we're all we're proving is it's not the the collection of digits used in this puzzle are not one, two, three, four, five, and six. This is odd, actually. How how are we going to get a handle on? Just let me think about this. Sorry, I realise I'm not. I feel like I've got, there's got to be a way of proving how many different variations there are in, in, in like clearly gray has nothing at all in common with orange does it or these two digits must be different so these can't be like a double three or a double four pair so these are these are different and then that digit and that digit also add up to this digit. But those two digits, even if they were the well, they are either different or they're the same. And they see that digit. So what I'm thinking is, I mean, imagine this was, I don't know, two, four. And this was one, five. Then the problem is that could be, oh no, that's horrible. Look, that could be, that could be one and that could be five or maybe that can't work for that specific example just because it might give us a whispery problem but but there's nothing to prevent dark green from being the in the same pair of digits as orange this is weird okay i'm i i i fear i am not quite understanding this or not understanding how to how to mix and match these pairs up yet. 
there has to yeah there has to be repetition between the pairs there's simply too many pairs we've got we've got loads of different colors one or one yeah we've got seven different colors haven't we because there is the, the line is 15 long with one center so there are seven different colors but we can't have anything like that number of different digits they're all on the same bishop's color That's weird. That's very strange. But yeah, so, so if you look at the puzzle and look at the cells I've highlighted, they're almost always they're always on the same bishop's colour. The only one the only cells that are not are these three. That's the only cells. Oh, I know what this is. I know what this is. Right. When I say I know what it is, I, I, I don't actually know what it is, but I think I might have a clue at, at least how to start this. Um, oh, my phone is buzzing. That's fine. Uh, How do we do this then? How do we exploit the fact that everything is on the same bishop's colour? I think we might have to restart the puzzle. Um, let's, yes, I am going to restart it. Sorry, I'm going to restart it just to get rid of all the colouring. I didn't have anything useful in the grid. What I want to do is to try and differentiate between 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 the bishop's colours. So I'm going to... That's going to be the best way of doing this. It's, it's some sort of set I need to do. And it's just a case of working out how to do this. So I get the bishops, I get the maximum bang for my buck here. It's going to be something like that. Let's just try, let's just try that. Purple, purplify that. Yes, against that. That's going to pick them all up. Something like that. That's an absolutely hideous congregation of colours. I hope that's going to be clear. Um, which which colours could I maybe use better? Maybe if I change the purple to... That might be better. Yellow and green? I hope that's all right. Um, so what, what, I'm, what I've done here is I've highlighted three complete columns of this Sudoku and I haven't got I mean I literally have not got a clue what the digits are in that yellow set in, the, in these yellow cells because I don't even know from what digits we're selecting you know I can't say this is a one two three four five six this is a one two th so I can't say we've got three sets of the digits one to six in here because we might not have but but <laughs> But I have got three complete columns of the Sudoku, and I think we could agree, because of the rules of Sudoku, that the three complete columns in this Sudoku must contain the exact same digits as these three complete green rows. So the set of digits in green is the same as the set of digits in, ye in yellow. Now, what would happen if I removed this cell? from the set of digits in green and the set of digits in yellow. What can we say then? Well, the congregation of digits that we've got left in green must be exactly the same as the congregation of digits we've got left in, in yellow because we had exactly the same in both sets before I removed the same thing, the, the same cell from both sets. So this we can repeat that trick, can't we, for anything that is in both sets. We just take it out of both sets, and what we're left with, whatever it is, is the same. And we've now got nine digits in yellow and nine digits in green, which we know are the same. Now, yes, and this is it. This is it, because now I actually have, I've, got, I've got some a ludicrous thing going on now, because remember, this square is is a number um it it is the sum of everything on the lip, zipper lines um so one of the digits in the yellow set 
is the sum of digits in the green well no, hang on one of the digits <laughs> oh no no how, how can, it's uh, sorry and this is obvious i'm just finding my, my mouth is not behaving in terms of how i want to explain this so the collection of digits in yellow obviously includes this digit well which and the collection of digits therefore in green includes this digit because the yellow and the green sets are the same which green digit is this one it cannot be a digit on the blue line because the blue line is the sum of two digits on the blue line equals this square so we can't put this digit here because once we add whatever the equivalent whichever side of the line it is one two three four it's this one i think once we add that one to that one we can't get that one unless one of these is zero and zero is not an option i mean this is a ludicrous puzzle that has loads of optionality but one of the options is not to put zero in the grid so that means the only place this digit can live in the green set is there they are the same uh let's let's make that red circled and that means uh that means something and brain come on give my mouth something to say that is not completely and utterly facile um it means that hang on <laughs> um yeah here's something interesting it means that this digit is on the whisper line because in column two where does this digit go and the answer is it cannot be again in yellow um, because if it's again in yellow it has to be again in green and it can't be in another green cell because that will put it on the line in fact yeah it will, another way of looking at this is to say okay where could it go in column two it can't go in these two squares and it can't actually be on the line in blue even can it because then it once you add the opposite of blue or the other side of the lines to, to if we if we decide this is the same as this we have to take this cell add it to this cell and we should get this cell so if we're saying that these are the same number that has to be a zero which we know doesn't work so one of these is this digit maybe actually i should use um uh hang on i'll use letters so that i can just label this up so uh if this is if that's a and this is a we're saying in column two a is in one of those two squares and therefore it's on the whisper and therefore it's therefore i want to say it's got to be high it's got to be higher than five i think that must be right there isn't a way is there that this well i'm just <laughs> i'm just playing in my mind with a small thought which is could that could they both be four and that if one of these was four it's not breaking the whisper that would actually be hilarious if this digit which is the sum of an enormous number of pairs along this line was as low as four because well every cell on the line would have to be lower than four so every single every single cell i can't actually see immediately why this is broken i'm sure it is broken but it would be funny if it isn't these would all have to be lower than four so there would be one two three triples everywhere now why is that broken nine would be one of the digits on the oh i see why it's broken yes i do see why it's broken <laughs> I've, I've, I've only seen one way i think it must be broken about a hundred different ways but i've seen one way it's broken that what i was um what i was going to say though was because four has to therefore be in one of these squares on the whispers line four is a monogamous digit it can only partner up with nine this is the only digit that's five away that's sudokuable 
So we would now know the collect, well, we do now know if this is four, that the collection of digits that make up this puzzle are one, two, three, four, and nine, because whichever one of these is four has to have nine next to it on the whisper. If this is four, that has to be double nine. However, what I've suddenly realized is that this doesn't work because um, this whisper line needs to have digits that are, well, one of these is four. What's the other one is the point, because if this is four and this is nine, this digit has to be lower than than five by whisper logic. But it sees one, two, three and four. So it can't be none. None of the digits on this line. If they're low, they have to be four. <laughs> um, and because we can't put the two fours there, because of this four is what what we're postulating four is not the sum of the digits along the along the zipper line so we can get rid of this this is not right um and we go back here and we do now know that because this can't be as low as four it is at least six because it just appears on the whisper so it can't be five so this is six seven eight or nine and therefore, these two squares on the whisper are high. So these are six, seven, eight, nine. And these are low. These are one, two, three, and four. Right. Can we pinpoint where A goes in any other? Where does A go in this column? A, A can never be, A is in one of those two squares, I think. Uh, that's really weird. Oh, I see, yes, okay, so A is in one of those squares, that's true in this column. Where's A in column five? Not in either of these squares, and it can't be on the, on the zipper line, so it must be in one of those two squares, so that's sort of an X-wing on A's, and then we're gonna get the same thing, aren't we, in this column? Well, this, this X-wing means we can't have any more A's in this row or this row. We can't have any A's in this these two rows. So the A's have got to be in those squares. Um, I bet there's a way of proving this can't be A, actually. Because if that is A, then these two digits have to add up to A, which is the, you know, the, these would be the same sorts of things as are appearing all over the place on the zipper line. Or maybe that means they are A. And that, or this is A. Because all I'm thinking is if these two add up to A, there's going to be... Well, there's, there's loads of pairs that add up to A. A on this this massive line so to introduce another pair that add up to a feels um it feels a bit profligate doesn't it um oh i'm sorry i thought i thought we were on i thought we were about to finish the puzzle actually but we're not Um, these two digits, they appear in the green set, and the green set are all on the zipper line. So these, these are definitely both lower than A, which does mean this might still be A. Ah, uh, oh, Simon, naughty, naughty brain. Well, what am I meant to do then? If, if, I don't know. I'm confused now. So.
Um, am I sp if knowing this is six, seven, eight, or nine? If it's six, then there's definitely one in one of these squares. And if it is six, everything on this line has to be lower than six. Oh, I'm almost getting colorblind now. Um, I don't think I'm quite, quite figuring this out, am I? Let me just think. Sorry. Um, now I'm now now my brain is telling me that this these do these must add up to a. Is that right? If everything on this line, apart from this, adds up to A. Oh. I sort of feel, uh, what I feel, my, my brain is feeling, but this isn't logic, this is just a feeling, is that because A is sort of matching off between these two, the, the collection of digits in green and the collection of digits in yellow is the same. And I know that these are the same. But the rest of the digits in... Ah, ah, I see it. I see it. Right. So the rest of the digits in... Yeah, the, I think these have to add up to A. The, 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 the rest of the digits are all on this line, which is pairs of digits that add up to A by the rule of the line. Now, look at these two squares then. So they add up to A. But that's the same as the same principle as applies between these two squares. They add up to A as well, don't they? Yes, yeah, so my, what my brain was feeling is correct because we're going to, we can cancel out adjacent pairs along the line all the way along the line until we hit we hit the last pair which doesn't have an equivalent um so so well, yeah let me show you how i think this is going to work so th these two digits we know they add up to a uh, let's just give those a quick purpley flash what do those two digits add up to well by the rule of the line those two digits add up to also a so if I was to remove these from the yellow set and remove these from the green set, then we know that the digits in the green set will still sum to the same number as the digits in the yellow set. Because at the moment, we know that the yellow set, the, green, the digits and the green digits are totally identical. So they must sum to the same number. So if I remove those two from green and these two from blue, they still sum to the same number. And now I'm going to take the next pairs in in, in along the line. Those two and these two must have the same sum. And I'm going to take them out of both sets. And we're going to keep doing this. So now we're going to take this one and this one and this one and this one and they must pair off. And we get left with these two, which we know add up to A. And they, whatever these add up to, they are the same sum as these two, which therefore must add up to A. <laughs> and if they add up to A, that's what we have to put here. That is A. So that's A, which means that's A by Sudoku. This is bonkers. That's not A. So this is A. This is A. Uh, that's probably not the best place for, for our A. We probably wanted it there, actually. But anyway. Right, that's... Now, I think we're done with our colouring. I can't see what other value we're going to extract from it. Oh, is that true? It might be true. I'm not sure. I'm just going to get rid of that colour as well. So th these two digits now look interesting to me because whatever that digit is, let's make it B, I'll make that digit C. 
you can see on this in this box we're getting B and C um, on the line and what the reason that feels like it matters is that that square plus that square equals A but whether this is <laughs> whatever this is that must be B or C mustn't it because we know that B or B and C are a pair that add up to A so if this is B or C, that must be the opposite of B and C, if you see what I mean. So maybe that's a good thing to do. Let's give this a... We'll make that purple, and we'll make this yellow. Um, so this must be yellow, because B plus C equals A. We know that from here. But we know that this must be yellow, because we know that purple plus yellow is equal to A. So this one, which is the third one along the line, that one must be B or C, but that must be purple. Yeah, this is great. This is great, because now, where does purple go in this box? And the answer, I think, is here, by Sudoku, which means that that's purple, and therefore we can find its equivalent along the line, which is that square, which is now yellow and now that's in the same column as C so this must be B so, so yellow yellow is B purple is C purple is C yellow is B and we can yes that's purple that's C so that means C is low. Look at that. This is absolutely mesmerizing. This is what Dorlier does. Just basically takes your breath away. Now, I think I'm going to replace that with C, actually. I, I will remember that C has to be low. Um, now, can we place all the Bs? I'm sure that we probably can. There's a B in one of those. And a B in one of these. Oh, imagine if B was high. If B was high, then, well, I suppose maybe six and one might be possible. So B, B being high wouldn't necessarily mean A was massively high. But, well, hang on. If we put B on the blue line again, we've got to put C opposite it. Opposite it. So that can't work, can it? Yeah, if I put B there, then that's saying put C here, which we can't do. So that's not B. And that's going to... So then this is the B in this box. So B is B is on the line. B is high. Oh, that's huge. That's got to be huge. So B is high. It's at least 6. So A, A is not 6. And okay, so all of A, B, and C are placed. Let me just think about this. Let's make A green. Now, yeah, and these two digits add up. These two digits have to be different, and they add up to A. Right, so I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to colouring. This can be, uh, we'll make these orange and blue. And we'll make them D and E. So D and E are there. What does that mean? Yes, I see. I can see something. Right. Um, so in where did D and E go in box one? And the answer is... We don't know exactly but they go into these two squares therefore one of d and e is on the line as the second position and we know d and e sum to a so that square which is the second position in the other direction must be d or e hmm. i thought that would be resolved by the fact that I coloured these in, but maybe that's wrong. Okay, sorry. Uh, um, 
Hmm. Not quite see. I think I think all we've got to do is work out how to fit. Well, it's going to be it's going to be that square as well, isn't it? We've got to figure out where these three squares or how they work along the rest of the the big zipper line. So let's get rid of that square. These two squares are an E F pair. And we know that if this was E, then D will be on the other side of the line, um, which is the third position. So this would be a D, that could be a D though. Hmm. Okay. This is E or F by Sudoku in this row. Maybe, maybe we'll go full good lift on this. We'll put D, E and F everywhere and just see what we can eliminate. Um, can we eliminate anything? Yes, those are not E. That's not E because of the E here. Oh, hang on. Well, that's just done it then, hasn't it? Haven't we, don't we now know what this is? Sorry, that was totally and utterly obvious. Where does E go in this column? It's got to go here. Now, if that's E, that's an orange digit. And therefore we know D must be there. Perfect. So that is D, which means this is F. This is E. Uh, this is just absolutely gorgeous. I uh, and I'm I'm I still don't know what the dis what the numbers are that we're going to find as a result of this. But it's very exciting to think that we're about to learn how this all works now. Okay, so what what have we done now? Have we is it finished? <laughs> Hang on. So I'm not sure actually. It must be finished. Why can't I just see how this finishes? One, two, three, four. That's the fifth digit. One, two, three, four, five. So these two have a relationship. Right. Is that somehow important? Probably. Um, so they could be D and E, I think. I don't think these two cells, if they were a D E pair, they don't they don't see a cell and force it to not exist. I know that digit is low. So maybe I need to sort of keep, try and keep track of that. Two, three, or four. And we know that. So E or F is low. But we know that A is at least. Well, we know A is at least seven, don't we? Because we know that B, which adds up to A on this line, is at least six by whisper logic. That square is a six, seven, eight, or nine. Yeah, but we know, actually we know that these, right, this can't be a six. Because if B was six, six is monogamous on the whisper and only has one partner. And it would have to have partners of one. And C would have to go there. This would both have to be ones, which doesn't work. So actually B is not six, B is at least seven. So B, and that means A is at least eight. So A is eight or nine. So how do we finish this then? I, oh, hang on, we finish it by looking at that square. That square's F by Sudoku in the bottom row, that's D. Oh, but hang on, so, it, oh, oh, that's it. That's, that's just sick. It's so clever, this puzzle, it's, it's too clever. It's too clever. It's just making me look like an absolute prize, Charlie. I'm sorry. Right. OK. This being F raises the question, how can F appear on this line? Well, it can't. We can't add D or E to F to make up A. We know D and E add to D and E to make up A. So the only thing you can add to F to make A is another F. But if you add another F, 
So, so if we're saying 2f equals a, what is the nature of a? And the nature of a is, is that it's even. So it is 8 and f is 4 um, and this is 4 and wherever this the equivalent of this is on the line um, which is, hang on, let's just work this out. So, it, we, we, well, we're two away from the middle, so it's that one. That's got to be F, which means this is E, this is D, this is F, this is D, that's E, that's F. That's, that is the shading of the puzzle. We can just double click this to finish it. So, so the, the A's now are eights, the F's are fours, and is any of this on the whisper line? <laughs> um, well, the way to do it is now to say what's B? Because B, we worked out, couldn't be 6, so B must be 7. And if B is 7, we know C is 1. Um, and what have we got left to do? D and E. D and E. So D... So it's going to be, yes, I see how to do this. There's a seven on the whisper and it's next to E. So we need a digit that's at least five away from seven and it can't be one, so it must be two. So E is two and therefore D by mathematics is six because we know D and E add up to eight and that is how to do the puzzle, I think. Boom, that is absolutely mesmerizing. <laughs> Wow, Dahlia again with just something completely and utterly brilliant. That is absurdly clever. I love that. I love the fact that you can you can see that they're all on the same bishop square, which immediately rings set bells with me. I've done a few puzzles before where that has been an important thing. And then, well, I love the fact that it gave that digit, but I don't actually think that was the key thought. The key thought was that those two digits had to add up to A. That was the key thought. And then you can, you can sort of colour to a finish. Ah, wow. Whisper Zipper, indeed. Dorlia, take a bow. Fantastic, fantastic setting. Loved it. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.